Welcome to this edition of On the Scene. I'm your host, Tim Kelly. On today's program, we're talking about two resources here in the city of Suffolk that you can tap into, Common Health and the Suffolk Workforce Development Center. Now, these resources may be a bit underutilized, but on today's program, we're going to tell you what they're all about and how you can take advantage of them. Stay tuned. Welcome back to On the Scene. Joined now by Adonica McCain. She's the Financial Services Coordinator with our Department of Social Services here in Suffolk. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Sure. We're here today to talk about Common Help. Now, that is an online resource uh, that Department of Social Services utilizes, and your customers are able to tap into and utilize. What is Common Help, and what can it do? Well, Common Help, pretty much, it, as you stated, it's a resource. Um, and in efforts to step into the technological age with social services heard the heat of customers and wanting to expand on customer service um, they enacted this customer service portal it's an online web-based portal for our clients and the community at large to apply for benefits renew their existing benefits and report changes and things of that nature it's pretty much a one-stop shop for your social benefit programs that you have with social services so if you can do a tap into the, a lot of the, the, the resources and information that you noted you can get through Common Help, it saves you from having to go into the social services and, and you know, I don't know how the process works there, but wait or whatever. But again, you can get quick answers. Obviously, you still may have to interact with a human being from time to time. But again, you can do a lot of this stuff online, which it saves you. You can do it from the comfort of your own home, right? Indeed. Okay. It, it's, it was enacted to be a fast, easier way and to expand on customer service. Our offices, we're on off of East Washington, but we're, you know, centralized. Right. Suffolk is a vast city. <laughs> yes. So um, for clients who may or may not, you know, be so mobile to get to our services Correct. or our offices for right. the services, you can apply online at any given time. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as getting to the site, is it on, I know on the Department of Social Services webpage, how can you get to it from there? Or is there a web address that they can easily type in and kind of get access to? Yes, sir. There's a web address. Okay. It's www.commonhelp, H-E-L-P. Okay dot virginia okay. dot gov and then a client can go online okay. type it in and we've enhanced the feature it's been enacted for about close to two years at this point and initially we got feedback that it wasn't necessarily customer friendly okay. so it has been enhanced as of recent nice. and it's more simple pretty okay. much um, it's very straightforward there is an eight five five number that you can contact someone and it's listed visibly on the website if you have any issues okay. but um, pretty much it's it's tabs on the very front right. page where okay. you can just click health care or all benefits okay. renew my benefits okay. am I eligible things of that nature we enhanced it so that it would be very stress-free and customer friendly very nice mm -hmm. and um, now with it how do you get set up? Do you need to talk with someone? Do you just go online with a certain number that you have? How do you get tapped into it to get yourself on the system, so to speak? Well, no, you don't have to speak to anyone. Okay. You can go online okay. and um, under each tab, there's a get started button. Mm -hmm. You click on the get started button and it starts with demographic information that it'll ask you in order to create your account, okay. um, a user ID and a password okay. that you should not share with anyone, but it's unique to you. Yes. And you can access your um, anything on the site using that information. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some of the uh, uh, benefits uh, uh, that you can get information on or register for or whatever through the site? Kind of maybe, uh, I know it, it could be a lengthy list, but what are some of the types of things that people can access through there as far as, um, I, I know there's SNAP and TANF, are those accessible through there? If so, what are some of the other things as well? Yes, sir. SNAP, which is Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program. Okay. Um, TANF, which is Temporary Assistance for Needy Families with Minor Children, which is a monetary um, benefit. Um, there's also child care provision, where you can apply for assistance with paying for child care. Yeah. Then there's also energy assistance, which right now, <laughs> yeah. There's the fuel crisis or cooling that falls under the energy assistance program. And yesterday, as a matter of fact, June 15th, we started taking applications. So any client can go online okay. to apply for cooling assistance nice. for under the energy assistance program. And then there's also um, medical assistance, health care provision. You can apply through Common Help, right. again, to apply for new benefits renew your existing benefits, things of that nature to put in an application. Um, but we also have an, uh, an additional feature, okay. which is called Cover Virginia, which is, Cover Virginia is a call center in which our clients can call in to apply strictly for health care services. And some people just like speaking to a live of person, course. and you do get a, <laughs> right. a live person on yes. the Cover Virginia call center. And um, 
the call center, it's there is a number for it, right. and it's accessible Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., okay. and on Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Nice. Okay. Yes, and I can provide that number for sure. you if you'd like Please. for Cover Virginia as okay. well. It's um, 1-855-242-8222. Okay. Okay. Cover Virginia. Cover Virginia Call Center, yeah. yes. Now, again, all the things we're talking about, there is no membership fee or anything. You, it, you, it's free access to get on there. Um, again, you just need to know information about yourself to set yourself up, or if you're already in the system, it's a matter of just tapping into it. Uh, I assume you would have a reference number or something you would use to make sure you're you when you're applying, saying those are my services or the benefits that I'm already a part of, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, yes, it, there's no fee for this. Right. Even the toll, uh, the number that I gave you or provided is toll free. Okay. Um, there is a series of ID proofing, which you just answered uh, specific questions about yourself to verify who you are. But yes, it's as simple as registering yourself and getting set up with your own user ID and password to access anything, any of those features online. Do you need to have an email address? Um, no, you do not. You do not. I okay, I didn't know if that was a prerequisite because sometimes when you register for things online, you know, they'll email you back, you confirm and that, but basically you just have your own personal information as you your noted. Own personal there. And you can also go t back to the website to check your own benefits. Okay. It, um, once you hit um, renew benefits, there's also a, a tab in which it states my application or my benefits. Right. So it's not like it's feeding your information to your email address. If you have right. one, you can enter that sure. information sure. there. So we will have that information readily available if by chance we need it. Got but it. you can access that particular website to view any of your information. It's not necessarily feeding back to your email address. Now, if you were to go on Common Help or, and, and try to register for or apply for any of the services noted there, um, how quickly do you find out if you've been approved? Is, I mean, is there a length of time? Do you find out immediately? Or how does that process work through the well, site? Well, for example, if you're just curious yes. in regards to whether you're even eligible, because they do have that feature there where you can screen and you um, punch in your demographic information and your, you know, your information according to your circumstances yes. to see if you're even eligible. Right. It's near real time okay. information okay. Um, on the website. Now, if you have, um, uh, if you're going online to renew your benefits, yes. your existing benefits, you're submitting an application for it to be reviewed. Yeah. Most of the information is near real time, okay. but the information is fed back to social services. Got it. Mm -hmm. Now I know that uh, I know you've been with the city of Suffolk for about you said about two months, right? Yes. So, but what is what is the general consensus among um, you and your coworkers with regard to how the system has been working for the couple of years? You noted there's been some improvements that have been made based on customer feedback, which again we always want to improve our services, um, but just how this works from your perspective for the clients that you, you work with? It's been very beneficial. Um, again, because social services is being centrally located yes. in the city being yes. so vast, for our clients who can or you know may not be able, right. can't or may not be able right. to get to the offices, it is a great feature because you can go online at any given time Correct. to review your benefits, right. renew or what have you. Sure. Um, but what we want to really stress at this point is that some people believe that it's a site to initially just apply for your benefits right. and we're trying to um, drive the point home for our clients yes. and the community at large Correct. that you can renew your benefits mm -hmm. and view all that the, the social so social services or social services department right. has to offer at any given time. So truly customer service oriented from yes. all aspects like you said both for the application as well as the renewal, which again will save the, the, the client or the customer time and, and effort to get, like you said, to have to come in or do whatever. Not to say they still can't, of mm -hmm. course. I mean, Indeed. you know, certainly customer service, again, to focus point at the facility that you noted as well, but again, with the size of the city and the fact that y'all are centrally located, mm -hmm. it will make it a lot, lot easier for those who have not used the system. I mean, a, approximately, I don't know if you have, would have this number, what percentage of, of clients are using the, the Common Help system? I don't know if you, you would have those numbers. Unfortunately. I don't no, have okay, those yeah, numbers, yeah. Um, but we're trying to drive home and get, if we can, 100% <laughs> of clients to Correct. utilize the services. Right. Um, and we're, again, in trying to make it a one-stop shop, yes. we've enhanced an, an additional feature on the website as well. Now, and I want to say it's been enacted for maybe about a month or so or two months, it might be a little bit longer than that, that, um, for example, if clients, because some clients believe if I'm working, I'm not eligible, things of that nature. Right. Well, right. that's not necessarily the, you know, accurate. Correct. So submit your pay stubs, right. submit documents that we may need to verify who you are sure. or income, things of that nature. Right. You can upload it to the feature okay. and we're able to see it okay. from that point on and use it to determine your eligibility. So we've done a lot to enhance sure. the site so that 
again, it could be an all one-stop shop. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Now again, that, that web address is for the Common Help? Yes, it's www.commonhelp, H-E-L-P, right. Virginia, please spell out Virginia, okay. dot gov. And of course, we'll have that up on the screen as well, and I've, I've had it up a couple times throughout the interview that people can jot that down, because again, you know, it's a little bit to remember, but once you have it, you can bookmark it and save it. That way you have quick reference Great. when you have to go back to it there. Okay. So, um, Ms. McCain, again, just if someone has not uh, tapped into Common Help yet, what would you offer to them if they're watching this interview? A suggestion on your part that maybe you might want to consider doing that. Again, it makes it easier for you as the user, correct? Indeed, it, it really does. Um, we want to just stress and drive home that it is customer service friendly. Right. It's very, it's geared towards the customer to make it a stress-free <laughs> experience right. for you. So please just go on the website, peruse the website, you know, um, and if you have any questions, please call that eight, uh, 855 number right. that is visible on the website. Now you do have workers that you can contact, but in utilizing the website, sure you should pretty much, it's, it's pretty much uh, for self-service. We're trying to give you more control right. over your own benefits and making you involved in the, in, in the processing of it. Empowerment of the customer, correct? There you go, Good yes. Deal. Well, Ms. McCain, thanks for being with us today to talk about Common Help. Again, a great resource that you could tap into through the Department of Social Services. Again, you can apply for benefits or review your benefits or even find out, you know, again, if you qualify at all. I mean, and again, it's a nice, easy way to do that. You yeah. can do it from the comfort of your own home or any computer that you would like to access to do that. Yes. So, again, a great resource. And, uh, Ms. McCain, thanks again. We Thank appreciate you. your time today. And we'll have more on the scene when we return. Welcome back to On the Scene. We're joined now by Larry Brunson, who is the Suffolk Workforce Development Center Coordinator. Thanks for being with us today. Glad to be here. Tell us a little bit about what goes on at the Workforce Development Center. It's a big name, but a lot of things happening in that place. Well, actually, the Workforce Center has several components. Mm -hmm. We have about nine partners there that deliver free services to the citizens and those that come into the center. Uh, we're open from 8.30 to 5, located at 157 North Main Street in Suffolk, downtown very easy access. Um, we do things like uh, helping people with their resumes. So we have some general services uh, that include going into our resource room. We have about 25 computers where people can come in and do all sorts of things. They, yep. We don't have a VC there present, but right. we have access to their systems. Right. So those that have claims or questions with the VC yes. can go online. They can do job searches. Um, they can do other things, homework if they need to. Okay. Uh, we have uh, some supporting partners there. We have Step Up. We have uh, Opportunity for Change. We have uh, a big partner, Opportunity Inc. And what does Opportunity Inc. do? Yeah. They're very un underutilized, um, but they fund training and education you know, training for, uh, for clients that meet their criteria. They also deliver intensive services. So, you say, for instance, someone is not well groomed on how to do an interview, or they've been working for 15 years and now they're out of work. Right. And so they haven't had to deal with that. Right. They get intensive services one on one with them. Okay. Um, we also have a system with our uh, staff that if someone comes in, we try to find out what their needs are. We give them an intake form, um, and then they fill those, those forms out, and then we coordinate those services among our own partners. Okay. Uh, we serve primarily the underserved, mm -hmm. but our target this year is the, the age group of 18 to 24, mm -hmm. um, out of school youth, of which Opportunity Inc. has a out of school youth program where those people that are eligible for the program, mm -hmm. um, those uh, students receive a site stipend oh. uh, while they're in the program, and the whole goal is to get them onto their career path. Right. So again, we're talking about a, a, a place in the Workforce Development Center that if you are looking for a job or maybe have a job and looking to upgrade and really just need to kind of freshen up your own personal uh, resources because again, like you said, if you've been in the workforce for a while, haven't had to do an interview in a while, right. haven't had to create a resume, you know, that resume sitting in the shelf collecting dust because, well, you have a job, but you need to kind of get going with that again or want to get going with that again, your place is the place to go. It is the place. And yeah. we also focused on uh, the governor's initiative. Mm -hmm. um, that is a workforce initiative that wants to add 50,000 industry cred credentials for our citizens. That includes Suffolk. Right. Uh, one of the things that we do at the center in, to help that, uh, we proctor the CRC. So it's, it's work keys assessment mm -hmm. that, uh, that uh, measures applied math, applied reading, and locating information. We're kind of focused on the um, sciences and math 
right. at the same time. Uh, so we partner with um, community colleges like Paul D. Camp Community College. We're in collaboration with the Prudence Center. Mm -hmm. um, another focus f for the government is um, advanced manufacturing mm -hmm. and tr trying to close the skill gaps. So again, that 18 to 24 population where you kind of maybe don't know what you want to do, right. the workforce center is a place you can come and find out. Okay. We'll give you some assistance. And a lot of the resources, if not all the resources you're talking about, are, are free. They are free. It's just a matter of tapping into them, and the first step is either put a phone call in or come into the office, come right? Come into the office. Right. Find out what we have to offer. I mean, we have, again, uh, great services. Right. Um, uh, we also help people um, in discovering their path. We use what we call the career path model. Right. So everybody's model is not the same. Every, everyone's pathway is not the same. Sure. So we may have, we serve both the traditional a seeker and also the non-traditional seeker. Okay. So someone that's in high school, we have programs for them. Right. Someone who's recently out of high school, we have programs for that person. Someone who has maybe has spotty work history, mm -hmm. we have resources to help those persons as well. Now, if you walk into the Workforce Development Center for the very first time, you come in, uh, I believe there's a, a nice reception desk right there right. to greet you. Well, how does that process go? I, if I walked in there and said, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a job or I've never been to, to the Workforce Development Center before, what can you do for me? How is that first interaction going to be and what are the steps that you get you from there to deciding what path you can go on depending upon what your skills are and maybe what you want to achieve as so an individual? A couple of things that happen. One, you'll be greeted very warmly with our receptionist or the person that's working our lab. Um, they'll ask you a few questions. You'll just sign in and if you uh, need further assistance or there's something that you're a specific area that you're not sure in a couple things we do we have some tools uh, one is the Virginia Wizard okay. uh, the Virginia Wizard is a, uh, a tool that can help you identify your interests and also your skills group them together and create a job cluster okay. uh, so it kind of creates the top three so it may be manufacturing it may be teaching it may be you know um, being an engineer right and then you get an opportunity to go into that system and then identified jobs that are related to those clusters. Right. You may discover that you, there's a job in there or a career path that you hadn't even thought of. Correct. Also in that same system, it will give you ideas or tools on how to reach your goal. Let's say for instance, your cluster may be, I'm gonna be, you may have interest in becoming a school teacher, but you don't have a degree. Right. So it'll give you those steps right online what you need to do. It also identifies schools in the area that uh, provide those kind of training and where they get the funding from as well. Okay, wow, that's pretty pretty resourceful uh, to tap into. Now, you know, the Workforce Development Center, you talked about some of the partners that, that y'all work with, and that's one of the things that your staff can do to make sure that, you know, if you have a candidate standing right in front of you that would be perfect fit for, you know, Opportunity Inc. or some of the other organizations you, you partner with, you can make that connection for them and get them routed to the right person, exactly. correct? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Now, one of the things I've discovered since I've been at the center, mm -hmm. we do have a great partner, the Literacy Council. Right. So if someone has a barrier in that area, we provide uh, free services for your GED, mm -hmm. um, getting your reading level up, building your confidence. We do uh, workshops. We do interview workshops, right. self-esteem workshops, banking workshops. Right. We do um, all types of workshops that would help develop the whole person. So you may be great in one area of your life, right. but maybe deficit in another. So we have something that can help you bridge the gaps. Now, what, what does the Workforce Development Center also do for employers? Because I know you partner with some of them to offer services or, or events and things. Talk a little bit about that relationship that you have with employers in the area. And we have a great relationship with the employers. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we're working with the economic department. Right. So, of course, when there's new jobs right. coming available, then we can get a hold of those. But we are also hosting, uh, we do host uh, job fairs. Mm -hmm. uh, we also host informational fairs. And, and we work with uh, the employers that have work plans that let us know what they're hiring for, what are their needs. So it's twofold. We work f with the citizen that is looking for work or looking for a change. Yes. But we can't even do that without the employer. So, of course, we have a great network with, with the employers in the area. Now, if someone wanted to get more information about the Workforce Development Center, is there a good contact number for them to call or maybe a, a website or something you could refer them to to kind of maybe get some information before they walk in that door or make that initial, maybe maybe even make that initial phone call? Okay, if someone wants to call, they yes. can call area code 757-514-7730. Okay. Uh, again, we're located at 157 North Main Street in Suffolk, downtown. Okay. 
in the white building where, where the Virginia Pal is on the bottom. Right. We're on the second floor. Okay. Uh, just come up to the second floor, mm -hmm. come to our desk, sign in, and, and there you are. All right. Now, shifting gears for just a second, I know you've been with the city now since May, I believe, of this year. Tell us a little bit about your background and what you're bringing to the table for the Workforce Development Center here in the city of Suffolk. Well, I have about 25 years in business and industry. Mm -hmm. uh, my last employer, which I'm currently still working on a part-time basis, right. Paul DeCamp Community College okay. uh, at the Regional Workforce Center. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a background in human resource management and operations management. Okay. Um, I also have a background as a senior manager with Cracker Barrel okay. for 12 years. All right. I've worked with, for the VEC. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a, 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 a national recruiter for some large firms. So I come with a host of experience on both ends, uh, from the business aspect and also from the academic aspect. What have you seen so far with the Suffolk Workforce Development Center as far as, I know we talked about all the services that are currently being offered, but I know certainly we always are looking for growth. Right. I mean, just kind of maybe some, some general ideas about your philosophy and what you want to see the Suffolk Workforce Development Center become for our citizens and our employers. Well, right now we're working on plans to make the center a certified one-stop. Okay. We're not a certified one-stop, although we act as a one-stop. Right. Uh, certified one-stop would al allow us to bring more, deliver more services mm -hmm. Uh, to the area, to our citizens and the co surrounding communities. We're also looking to become an uh, advanced educational technical center. Um, uh, of course, uh, right now there's such a huge skill gap in terms of the math and the sciences and also the other gaps. Employers tell us all the time we uh, don't have enough trained people to fill the gaps now because of aging workforce. Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to be in a situation where we can bring those kind of resources together. We are um, uh, aligning ourselves with other institutions as well, including the Virginia Manufacturers Association, Virginia Ship Repair Association, because we are a port area. Right. Um, and our focus should be teaching our uh, citizens, those that are in need, where are the jobs are at. Exactly. So, we're going to be, we're giving our staff lots of training in that area to bring our center up and let it be uh, a center of, of, of not only just importance, right. but in demand. And that people can have a place to come where they can get all their needs met economically, also ed educationally as well. Good deal. Well, it sounds like the Workforce Development Center is a great place to be and it's going to be even a better place to be as the, as the future kind of unfolds and more relationships are made. You talk about the certification trying to get there, working with staff to get them as far as, tr you know, get more training there that they can better help the people, the clients that you're, you're working with right now and will be working with again in the future. So I appreciate your time coming in to tell us about the Suffolk Workforce Development Center, a great re resource here in the city of Suffolk that perhaps is sometimes underutilized because people don't know what's there, don't exactly. know the services that you and your staff can offer. And you're there, you're just waiting for the customers to come in, the clients to come in to do business with and help them get to that, get, get started on that career path where they can uh, develop and become, you know, an even more productive uh, citizen here in the city of Suffolk, correct? Exactly. We're here to help. Good deal. Well, Mr. Brunson, thank you again. That will do it for this edition of On the Scene. I'm your host, Tim Kelly. We'll see you next time.